What's up guys, it's Blue. This video is going to show my first mythic kill using the Ren build. With this build I was running my Pantheon Trinket alongside Scourgewing. For the legendaries I was using the Great Storm's Eye and Alias Stoneheart. And for talents I used Dauntless, Double Time, Rend of course, Founding Stride, Titanic Might, In for the Kill, and Ravager. You guys know I'm one of the only advocates for Ravager over Opportunity Strikes in the Warrior community, but just give it a chance, it does better. As for how to use this build, it's pretty similar to back in the glory days of Tomb. 100% uptime for Rend when the target's above 20%. Your priority with this build is going to be a Colossus Smash debuff on the target, Rend, Super Lucky 2 Stack Executioner's Precision Mortal Strike, Alias Stoneheart, Execute Brock, Mortal Strike, and then Slam is your filler. As for your cooldowns, if you're listening to me and using Ravager, then you're going to want to use Ravager right after your Rend, and then use Battle Cry just before you eat your Shattered Defenses buff. If you're still wanting to use Opportunity Strikes instead of Ravager, then just skip over the Ravager part and go straight from Ren to Battle Cry, and then to your Mortal Strike or Execute in the same global cooldown. An example of the rotation in single target would be on pool, charge, Colossus Smash, and let's say that gives you an alias Stoneheart proc from the first hit, like happens pretty often on the pool. Then you're gonna cast Rend, use your Ravager. After the global cooldown reset, you're going to use Battle Cry and then your Alias Stoneheart proc Execute to eat the Shattered Defenses debuff. Warbringer to get another Shattered Defenses debuff on the target. Then Mortal Strike, followed by keeping your Ren debuff on the target and slam until you get another Tactician proc and then you use that. Just remember three things with this rotation. First, wait as long as possible to refresh Ren. 2.4 seconds is when the second to last tick hits and after that is when you want to refresh your Ren with the last hit being the expiration of the bleed and you don't want to ever let it expire. The second thing is when you get an alias proc, unless you're refreshing rend or putting shattered defenses on the target with your next cast, execute is what you're going to want to use. Don't save it for your next tactician proc because it has the highest chance of proccing your next tactician. And finally, this is just a small tip, but keep an eye on the remaining cooldown for Colossus Smash versus Mortal Strike. Frequently, I will see Mortal Strike finish its cooldown with one second left on the Colossus Smash one, and you're not going to want to use Mortal Strike there. You're going to want to use Slam or Refresh Your Rend, and then use Colossus Smash once it gets off cooldown, and then Mortal Strike after that. But the only time I'll ever wait is when I have just that one second remaining on Colossus Smash. With the Execute phase, Slam is no longer going to be used, and neither will Rend. All of your Rage is going to be put into Execute and Mortal Strike. This is a very rage negative rotation, so keep an eye on opportunities to cast charge to gain some extra rage. Priority is going to be Colossus Smash, Mortal Strike with a Shattered Defenses debuff, and two stacks of Executioner's Precision, and then Execute. You're only going to cast Mortal Strike in that one situation, and the rest of the time you're going to be using your rage to spend on Execute. And you're only going to use an Execute with a Shattered Defenses debuff if you have a 40 rage Execute. You don't want to waste your Shattered Defenses damage on a 9 rage Execute that's going to hit like a wet noodle. If you have Shattered Defensive active and you're waiting for that 40 rage, then it's a perfect time to heroic charge out for some extra rage, and don't forget to use Bounding Stride to quickly run back out for your second charge. Then once you're back in, you should have the rage needed to use and execute and continue your rotation. As for the relics you want to shoot for, just a precursor, this isn't based on math or anything, but with this build, I shoot for Exploit the Weakness and Precise Strikes with about the same weight. And if I have to decide between the two of them, I like Exploit the Weakness more, because the benefit of precise strikes can't happen without the benefit of exploit the weakness, and stringing together a ton of tactician procs will skyrocket your numbers. After that, crushing blow, death blow, and storm of swords are what I try to obtain. Luckily with this tier, all of the relic drops in Antorus are usable, and because of the crucible, any of them can luck into the top trait, and you could very, very easily get a relic that has precise strikes or exploit the weakness and have them crucible into the other trait, and that's going to be your ideal relic to have. Lastly, for the best trinkets to run, in Antorus, you're going to want to use the Pantheon Trinket. Taking it off hinders the raid more than it can help you, so always leave it equipped if you're trying to progress in there. Seeping Scourge Wing is the go-to for single target. And for AoE, depending on the mobility of the fight, Forge Fiend's Fabricator is what I like the most. And the only fight I use Gorshalesh's Legacy for is ENR if I'm trying to parse. But for our Mythic Progression, I was using the Seeping Scourge Wing in the single target build, but I'll get into all that for my ENR Mythic video. Other than that guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I've completely forgotten about the Fervor build and I'm solely focused on using the Rend or the Avatar build depending on the fight. Fights like Antor and High Command I'll use Avatar for. 
One last thing before I end the video. I did farm out some of the tier 20 pieces to see if running the two-piece, two-piece would be strong. Um, in my head, I thought it would work, but in reality, my numbers came out to be much worse in my case, but my tier 20 pieces weren't the best. The pieces I had were both 915, and I had to replace a 950 and a 960 piece, so I definitely went down in item level. And I didn't have the best in slot legendaries equipped for my second trial using the helm in one of my tier slots. So if you still have your tier 20 stuff and have two that are Titan Forged really nice with good stats, you can use them plus a Convergence of Fate, then it could work. But because it's based on getting the lucky RNG forging, I don't have the content to support it and not even the stuff to test it. So test it yourself. If your old gear is using better using the Ren build plus the two piece, two piece with a Convergence of Fate as your trinket and spec into Ravager, that's really important with this. If it works for you, give it a shot. If not, no harm, no foul. Other than that, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if there's anything that you liked with the video, disagreed with, or just any questions you have. And other than that, I'll see you next time.